Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to talk about something more personal and this video is primarily for the friends and even some family members because there are a lot of questions that are asked and I think it's better to make one video. I am no expert by any means. I'm not advising to do certain things or not to do certain things in this video but, this, but in this video we are going to talk about k1 visa journey and the movement that is called love is not tourism if you follow me on instagram you know that i talk about it pretty often because i'm just like so tired you know it's just really heartbreaking and yeah anyways i'll talk about it in details so I'm engaged to the American citizen. Uh, my fiance's name is Dustin and actually we have been engaged for over a year now and it's been very very long and because he is the American citizen, I'm a Latvian citizen living in Belgium, so I'm a Belgian resident, we decided to go on this path of obtaining a fiancé visa. It's basically 90 days fiancé if you watch that show. I never watched that show, but if you watched it, you probably have a little bit of the idea what I'm talking about. So I was in the US for my internship for a year. This is how we met. We spent almost the whole year together and we just realized blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. I don't think it's very important. People who know us, they know. Anyways, so with that being said, I left United States on March 7th, 2020. And yesterday was March 8th. So I landed in Belgium on March 8th, 2020. So it's been exactly a year since I came back. And it's been a hell of a ride. We all know what happened. It's COVID, so obviously it affects the visa process and it's very hard so just to let you know there are three stages when you go um, on this path of k1 visa so first of all your fiance files a petition again you can find more information online if you need you can probably talk to the lawyers just to let you know we do have a lawyer anyways so the first step is actually you file a petition it goes to the uscis i actually call it uses because it's easier you know whatever so this is the immigration center they usually can process your petition from uh, five and a half months to i think it was six and a half months and during 2020 the time period actually increased a few times now it's back to normal i believe but i think it was uh, increased the last time from like eight and a half to nine and a half or ten months uh before it get back to normal so now it's again either from six months to eight months or something like that so it's relatively okay just to let you know when we chose that app it was incredibly important that i'll do not wait for a long time because we really want to start our family we want to get our place we just want to start traveling get cats get dogs you know just all those things so that's why we chose this visa and what we were told and what i saw online that you could get visa within like six to eight months a little bit longer a little bit shorter and it means from the petition stage until you get the visa itself it's been already almost a year since we are personally in the petition stage you can get either approved you can get a request for more information or you can get denied we got requests for more information which is a stupid thing and i think our lawyers could prevent that there are certain things that were not asked for me which i completely disagree with i think again the situation could have been and should have been prevented but okay, it is as it is. I already accepted the situation. The saddest part is just it actually puts us, you know, steps back uh, from getting an approval. And I hope it's an approval. I still don't know because USCIS has 60 days until they give you their verdict. And it's been 13 days now we send our petition in may so in a few months it will be a year since the petition so back to the stages the next stage would be um 
NVC, which is a visa center. They just process your file. Again, I'm not sure about all the steps. I know there are people who just dive deeper, but I already overwhelmed and stressed myself so much that I just really don't, don't need it to know more. After NVC assigns a case number to your file, they send it to your local embassy. The trick here is that a lot of the American embassies do not process K-1 visas because they think that those visas are not essential, families are not essential, COVID, although a lot of the states in the US are open, Super Bowl is happening, celebrities and all the rich people are traveling, but families, no, no, families are not important. And this is me being salty, but I'm just so over it. And this is actually where love is not tourism comes and this is where we're trying to be vocal. Again, there are people who just monitor the news all the time. They're more involved, they know way more than I do. But I think it's incredibly important to be vocal and let others know what is happening because a lot of people um, just not aware about that. A lot of people are not aware that there are kids separated from their parents, that there are unmarried couples like me and my fiance that cannot get together, our relationships are not valid. Meanwhile, you know, skinny models can travel to Paris, um, certain celebrities can get a private island to celebrate their birthdays in the midst of the pandemic, states can go fully open without even a mask mandate, so those things are fine, but God forbid families will reunite. And I'm just so sick and tired of hearing different politicians selling about how we should unite. Yesterday was an International Women's Day and people were saying how women are brave and strong and women should be able to do what they want. Well, thank you, but I actually I cannot because I want to be with my fiancé, but yeah, it's not allowed, you know, which is sad. So let's go back to the NVC stage. Once your file is in the NVC stage, as I said, they have to assign a file number and send it to the embassy. This doesn't happen. First of all, because the State Department doesn't allow the embassies to process the visa, they do not allow to have the interviews because COVID so scary, you know? Oh my God. And please, I do know that people are dying. But with that being said, then let's be honest, then rich people should not travel because poor people can't. So let's be equal. If we talk about being united, okay, let's unite in our struggle. And if you don't want to do that, if you still want to travel, if you want to open the states, you don't want to wear masks, then okay, let's make an exemption because people in love is not the reason they're willing to quarantine, they're willing to vaccinate and follow all of the guidelines. But that just has been ignored for so, so many months, which is ridiculous. So your file is, I don't know, I keep jumping from, you know, one thing to another. So your file is in NBC and it just sits there. It can sit there for months and months and months. A lot of people are being positive and they hope that with summer and spring coming that the US will just have to open the border because, you know, tourism, it's important, money, fuck the families money is our god. I don't know, we'll see, but it's like extremely devastating. <sighs> Love is not tourism has been ignored for so, so many months. Um, there are politicians that are fully aware of our movement, that it exists, but they decide to talk about pizzas and ice creams and breakfast and uh, any other type of foods and brag about how they spend their time with wives or husbands and children instead of acknowledging and actually saying like, okay, we see you, we don't have a plan, but we're working on that. Give us six months. I don't know, something like that. I am personally uh, in a limbo. I cannot get... I mean, I can get a job, a better job. I actually work, but it's a work that does not require even a high school diploma. It actually hits my ego and my confidence and my self-esteem a lot. Don't get me wrong, I like my schedule, my money, whatever, but I am a career-oriented person and I really love to grow into my work environment. And I don't know, I'm just like really lost and I don't know, should I look for an office job? But what if I get it and in three months I will get my visa? It's, you know, obviously you can overcome all those things, but it's very, very hard for your mental health. 
and again i don't think people truly realize what it is to be separated from your loved one for such a long time it was interesting for the first few months like oh my god how are we going to handle it there's so many things we can do online but a year later it's it's hard you know it's just it's incredibly hard and we don't talk only about unmarried couples fiancés we also talk about kids and their parents being separated if you're on Twitter and you follow Love is Not Tourism, there are so many stories where parents share how the kids struggle and I do believe in uh, traumas that we get from early childhood and that those things in our childhood can affect us and it just so crazy that governments choose to ignore that and they just don't see how much hardship, how much stress they cause for parents for couples it's it's ridiculous and there are people who say oh everything will be fine you'll just need to wait i don't want to hear that anymore i need action it's been long enough it's been a year i really hope our visa or our petition will get approved and it will go to nvc and from nvc it will go to and to the embassy within at least a month or two or three uh, but i do know that there are certain files that sit at nbc for six months a little bit less but it just it's ridiculous truly and another thing is that the interviews that embassy scheduled last year for example in march they were scheduled a few times and people for who applied for this visa in 2019 some of them are still waiting it's been for them, it's been even longer. It's just, again, crazy. I have my opinions, you know, I do believe that the country that was built on immigration and this big dream should have had a plan on immigration, especially now, especially when, again, there are rich people who travel, there are rich people who can get the whole island, there are rich people who can go to Europe, which is actually banned which is ridiculous but those people still can travel to europe interesting right i wonder what it is money maybe i don't know anyways so i think in this situation with vaccination with quarantine there had to be a plan like a few months ago i'm really surprised that there is not and that you know what hurts the most is that the movement is still being ignored i try to believe people who are more positive because I realized during this process that I'm actually a very negative person and again it's been very very hard and to all the people who ask uh, when Julia will come back or when Julia will leave like are you leaving soon what's with the visa um not soon I'm not coming soon I'm not leaving soon I'm just stuck in the beautiful well, you know, gray and kind of depressing limbo. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions about this process or you want to correct me on certain things, please feel free to do that. Maybe I was a little bit emotional, um, maybe not. I definitely know there are people who are way more emotional than I am. It's the very first time that I truly feel unhappy in my life. Usually even when I'd hit my lowest point, I always felt very happy, very thankful, but now, although I work on myself, you know, I meditate, I do art journaling, gratitude journaling, I am still, or at least I feel very, not very, but unhappy, I just cannot wait to reunite with my fiancé, get married, settle down, have our own place, get a bunch of animals, start cooking, traveling, you know, all that things. So yes, again, if you have any questions, let me know. If you go through the same process, let me know what you are feeling, what are your expectations, what are your experiences, and maybe you have some advices. I would like to hear them. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a good and lovely day. Bye. Mm -hmm.